G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.NET 2013 tutorial video. In this one, we're going to be exploring classes again, and in particular, we're looking at inheritance and polymorphism. Now, before I get into what exactly those two things are, let me put a situation forward to you. Let's say, for instance, I've already created a rectangle shape. I want to create another shape, which is a 3D version of a rectangle. Now, I've done a little bit of research on this, and I'm just going to call it a cube. All right, there's lots of different names for it. There's no particular one. Let's say we want to make another class, which is a cube. So, for example, we've set up two properties, which is width and height. We won't worry about the share guy. We'll just keep going. We've got the get area function. We've got the two properties that we set up, and then we've got the two constructor functions. All right. Now, if we were to turn a rectangle into a cube, we'd have to have the depth. We've got the width, we've got the height, and then we'd have to add on depth. Now, before I copy and paste or start changing the rectangle code, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce inheritance. Inheritance is quite a simple concept. You take everything from one class, such as this guy here, and you add it to a fresh class, and then you can add on more. Okay? So if I create a class which inherits, inherits the rectangle, it's going to include all the properties, all the functions, and all the constructors that the original class does, plus anything extra that I add on to it. So let's set up our cube class, and let's start right here. We're going to go public class C cube, because I like the letter C to be in front of them. And right now, that's an empty class. It doesn't include anything, and it doesn't have anything to do with rectangle. Even though it's in the rectangle file, it has nothing to do with our rectangle. Now, realistically, I would rename this in a real project to maybe shapes or something like that, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's have a look at inheriting this rectangle. So if I want to inherit all this stuff, then underneath public class, I write inherits C rectangle. And just by doing that one line, we inherit all of the public stuff down here. Now, the reason I say public is because it does not inherit any private members. So for example, if I just quickly type in sub new, so I've got a function that I can write some code in. If I go me dot, we can look at all the functions, we can look at all the properties, and notice how we've got height and width properties, but we haven't got the underscore width and the underscore height. So if I type on underscore, and then type in height, I get an error because it doesn't, it's not accessible because it's private. So what we're going to do, we're going to make one little modification to rectangle so we can access the width and the height before we continue. So we declared the width with private, which means that it only exists within the context or the scope of this rectangle class. So just in between public class and end class, which is known as the scope of the class. So if I want to be able to declare it just in the scope here and inside anything that inherits, we're going to change it to protected. Okay, and I'll do the same thing for height. And what you'll see, if I come back up here into sub new, I can type in underscore height. I can access it again. There won't be any errors in me typing that. Okay, so what we've effectively just done is we can now access every single little property, every single function, and every single constructor inside C cube. All right? And just because we change these protected does not mean that we can change them in our module codes. For example, if I quickly type in, um, let's go D cube one as a new cube. Okay, if I type in cube one and put a dot, Notice it's got all the same functions. We've got get area, we've got height, and we've got width. But we do not have underscore height and underscore width. We're not exposing them that much. All right? So protected only exposes it to things that inherit its properties and members. Okay, let's extend this bad boy. So realistically, to have a cube, we need to have some depth on our property as well. So we don't need to redeclare width and height. They are already included inside our cube. So let's declare our depth. And we'll declare it the exact same way. And now our cube has three properties. It has width, height, and depth. So this is all about inheritance, inheriting properties from another class. All right. And I think the biggest thing we should change now is adding in a public property of depth and our constructors. 
So let's go public property, just like we did in the last video, depth as an integer. We're going to set and get the guy. So if the value is greater than or equal to zero, so this is the exact same code, then depth equals value. And then for the get, we're going to return the depth. All right, done. We've just set up our new property. He's ready to go, so we'll collapse him. However, let's have a look at our constructors for a second. So we're going to have two more constructors with the exact same code pretty much. But we're not going to rewrite all this code. And I'll explain what I'm talking about in just a moment. We've got one constructor which accepts no parameters and another constructor which accepts two parameters. However, the problem is we're not just accepting width and height anymore. We have to accept a third parameter. Now, we're not going to add that here. We're going to add that back up in cube. And same thing with this constructor here. We're initializing width and initializing height, but we now need to initialize the depth. So again, we're going to do a backup in our cube. And I'm going to show you the easy one. Let's do the one without any parameters. So let's go sub new. And realistically, we want to do this code again. We could easily copy this code here and paste it just there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you something a little bit more advanced. Realistically, I want this code to execute. All right. So what you do for that is you go mybase.new. And what that's going to do is it's going to call on the base class. So my base class is this one, and I'm calling on this function right here. So it's automatically going to call on the width, the height, and the shape count for me, and then all I have to do is set the depth to zero. So call the original new and set the depth. And that's it. That's all I have to do in my new, my constructor, I should say. All right, so again, we're not going to utilize this bad boy because we don't want the width and we don't want the height. We want all three. We want width, height, and depth. So let's make a new one with a width, a height, and a depth. Okay, let's call on this constructor down here, so mybase.new. And if you open a bracket, you'll notice there he is right there. So let's pass him the width and the height. And then we set the depth of our own guy. And there it is. Call the original new and set the depth. So exact same thing. Call the original code and then we only have to worry about setting the depth then. All right, so the constructors are 100% done. I'd probably, let's test this guy out. Let's have a look over here. Cube one as a new cube. Let's see if our constructors are working. Open a bracket, width, height, and depth. So let's go 10 by 20 by five. Okay, let's modify this, the area of your cube. Now I shouldn't call it area anymore. It should be the volume because we're doing all three numbers. But anyway, now this is interesting. The number of rectangles are, let's just change this to shapes. And I'm gonna leave this as it is for the moment. All right, and let's just focus on cube one, get area. So it's 10 by 20 by five, let's press play. And you'll notice that the code is still working on the width and the height. So 20 times 10 gives you 200. And also notice that there's six rectangles and one cube, and yet it says the number of shapes are seven. So that just demonstrates how much you share with inherited classes and how powerful they can really be. Okay, because with just this code, we're utilizing all of this. Okay, and that there is inheritance and why it's so important and why it's so powerful. Now, the second concept I was going to talk about is polymorphism. Now, it sounds extremely complicated and there's lots of different descriptions out there on the web that can describe it in extremely complicated ways. But I'm going to try and break this down as simply as possible. Polymorphism is sharing functions. So for example, we've got one function which is get area. So up here, cube shares the get area one. However, for cube, we're gonna change the code. So polymorphism is having the same functions, but with different code under it. And we're gonna do that quite simply. We're gonna rewrite the get area function here, because we now need to include the depth. Again, I understand the stupidity behind, you know, get area for a 3D object because it's now the volume, but let's try and ignore that. So we're going to do the width times the height times the depth. 
And I mean, that's all the code that we really need for this guy. So let's have a quick look at an issue the Visual Basic's having right here. It says that the fun function get area shadows an overloadable member declared in the base class C rectangle. So what that's referring to is the fact that we have a get area here and a get area up in here when we're inheriting the original get area. So it's a little bit confusing for Visual Basic. He's basically saying, well, you've got two get area functions. What are you doing? Let's just have a quick look at the suggestion. It says, if you want to overload the base method, this method must be declared overloads. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you're just going to type in overloads, and that's it. Error goes away. The get area function has now been extended to include depth as well. And that there is polymorphism, because we have a function which matches the original, but then includes some original code just for the cube. Now, I don't actually have to change anything about the code in here, because we've already declared it with a depth, and we're calling get area, so we only have to press start and hope to hell. There you go. So 10 times 20 times 5 gives us 1,000. And that's it. So that's pretty much all I'd like to demonstrate to you today about inheritance and polymorphism. I hope to high held that it makes sense and that it helps you out in the future. In the next video, we're going to jump into classes once more and we're going to look at over, oh, sorry, overloading operators and a lot more. And then that's going to be our final video for classes in this series. So thanks for watching again, everybody. I'm Nick Dingle signing off. I'll see you in the next video.